Ken Buckley is a pro cycling coach with over 10 years of experience. In today's episode, 11 things that he hates. The fastest skin suit we've ever tested. The fastest aero helmet available on the market right now. The fastest socks we've ever tested. If you added up all of these wattage gains that everyone's getting from all the kit they're buying, we'd all be world tour. You wouldn't have to pedal because you'd save 200 watts on all of your, <laughs> your equipment. And I, they don't really honestly back it up with proper testing and put all the information out there. And when they do, actually you see it's, it's only quite small differences. Don't get sucked into all the marketing hype. If you're gonna spend loads of money on something, just like figure out, is it really gonna live up to that hype? And it probably isn't gonna completely transform the way you ride your bike and all of a sudden get you breaking your personal bests on the hills. Probably not, it'll be a small difference. Those are outrageous claims. But what isn't an outrageous claim is today's video sponsor. Sturka Electrolyte Tablets. Genuinely the biggest serving of electrolyte you can get in a single tablet. Stay hydrated, keep your salt levels up. There's 25% off your first purchase in the description down below. The discount is not just for the salt tablets, for all of their range as well, so check it out. My time trial bike. I'm not happy about it at all. I spent thousands of pounds on a brand new shiny time trial bike, getting it aero tested, setting it up, absolutely mint, and it came out in the testing slower than my old bike. And neither me nor any of the aero experts out there can really figure out why or put a finger on why this new shiny time trial bike is not as fast as the old one. Sorry, Trek, your speed concept isn't quite as good for me as the really, really old giant Trinity that I've been racing for like five, six years. That for some reason is just absolutely dialed in, set up, going really fast. So halfway through the season, I had to switch back to my old bike and then I went fast. That's my number one hated thing. <laughs> Shiny kit syndrome. Fine, if you wanna spend lots of money on stuff, do it. But make sure you're doing it on things that have the potential to make you a lot faster, not the last teeny, teeny, tiny bit. So like, sorry, ceramic speed and your ceramic bearings that are gonna be half a watt faster and cost you 800 pounds, but that's just way down on the bottom of the list of things that you should be spending your money on. Things like, I would say it, but coaching, testing, consult, just even consulting with a cycling coach and making sure that you're on point with your training, you're doing the right things. Going and get a fitness test with them to set your training zones accurately. Could be aero testing. Yes, an aero test is expensive. It might be a thousand pounds, but it could get you 30 watts in your riding position. You will know at the end of it exactly how many watts that has saved you. And it's a really good thing to do. And it's way better than spending 12 grand on the SL8, the latest version of the bike that you already have, the SL7, and it's five seconds quicker over an entire hour. It's just a lot of money on not a lot in return, and it sounds brilliant, but there are so many other places where you should be putting your money first before the brand new shiny kit. Although I do like brand new shiny kit, to be fair. <laughs> Are there any bits of shiny kit that are quite good bang for buck? Oh yeah, bang for buck. Aero socks are probably a shiny kit thing that will get you a lot, like you seven to 10 watts that's gonna, gonna cost you what, 30, 40, 50 quid. Other shiny kit that is really good bang for buck. A lot of it's really expensive. <laughs> Paying more attention to the 5% than the 95%. I'm all in for marginal gains and trying to find every last percentage point of performance possible, but not if it's at the expense of all the basics and doing the simple standard training things really, really well. People often lose the wood for the trees and they'll focus on like the supplements or the exact cadence that they're riding at or what color their shoes are, things like that, all the, all the while forgetting that they still gotta do Lots of easy miles, lots of structured training, lots of time spent on the bike. It's really easy to get distracted by the last few percent and miss out on all the really quick wins, the easy stuff that could be making you a lot better. My, my biggest gripe with Zwift is blindly following a training session. It does this really clever software magic thing now where you can just open up today's workout, press go, It'll speak to your trainer 
and just take you through the workout without you even having to read it or look at it or know what's coming. You've removed your brain and you've just done the workout. And I would much prefer you to be engaged with the session and what's going on. And Zwift has lots of little quirks in it that mean that the things I do in training peaks don't translate across to Zwift. So if I say to you, ride somewhere between 150 and 200 watts, Zwift just puts you in the middle and doesn't tell you that there is a range there that the coach has given you. The, I, I might add a note to say, do this at high cadence. Zwift don't tell you that. If I tag something as a warm up section of the workout at just a flat power, it will do this weird ramp thing where it starts you off really low and then finishes really high. And if, same for cool downs. If I mark something as a cool down, starts you 50 watts higher than you should be and finishes you 50 watts slower than I set it at. There's this really mad ramp. It's just getting in the way of people doing good quality training. If you're on a training plan, if you've got a coach, you don't need Zwift. Unproven gimmicks or more specifically, spending lots of money on unproven gimmicks. So things like ice baths, massage boots, wavy whale tail shaped wheel rims, the power breathe, what the f is that? The air hub. There's loads and loads of shit out there with great marketing that may, may make you a little bit faster, but it's absolutely not proven. It's gonna cost you loads of money. So stick to the basics, do the good stuff really, really well. And more often than not, the stuff that will make you faster is free like riding more. And <laughs> that should be number one on your list, not spending more money. Training hard when you're ill. Don't do it. It's never a good idea. Talk to your coach and say, I'm ill, what should I do? That, that's the best way to approach it. And just rest. You're not gonna get much out of yourself by trying to train hard when you're ill. The body just won't absorb it in the same way and you won't get the gains that you're hoping for. So just sleep it off, rest, do the right thing. There's nothing big or clever about powering through the training plan, even though you're ill, it's gonna make you worse. A trap that I often see people fall into is they go, I'm a bit ill, I can't do the hard workout that we've got planned, but mm, I'm not too bad, I'm gonna go out for a ride. And they end up riding longer and doing more training stress than the original hard ride that was planned. So they actually make it worse by not just accepting defeat, saying I'm ill, I'm gonna rest. If you absolutely have to ride, it's zone one only, super, super easy, two out of 10 effort level, and do like half an hour at the most. Like, just, just recover. Don't train hard when you're ill. I'm not gonna put Strava in the bin completely, but writing a Strava title before you put your comments and training peaks is really high up on my list of hates. <laughs> like, I'm all for sharing things on social media, fine. I'll have a bit of fun on Strava, go for it. Put a funny joke in, but it's not gonna make you faster. If you're all about getting yourself faster on the bike, then keeping a training diary, writing some comments and giving your coach some nice subjective feedback is more likely to make you faster than some emojis and a meme on Strava. So save it for after. <laughs> Strava's really getting it now, but the other thing that I hate is the humble brag on Strava. Oh, recovery ride, and you've actually done it at 270 watts for an hour. No one is doing a recovery ride at 270 watts. If you are, you're Philippe Organa, and everyone already knows you're a god. So there's no need to be doing humble brags on Strava. No one cares. Who are you? When you really do something impressive, you'll get the kudos. Focusing on getting all of your gadgets to work instead of just doing the training session. Power meter isn't calibrating, the batteries run out, bike computer isn't working, isn't loading the workout, erg mode is not cooperating, Zwift crashes. All of these things are just a distraction from doing your training session. So many times I see people spending an hour getting it all set up that they could have been riding their bikes and getting more training in. This technology is supposed to help us. It's supposed to make life easier and the training sessions more enjoyable. But more and more often now I'm seeing it get in the way and cause frustration and people are just freaking out because things are crashing. And it really is on that tipping point now of <laughs> making us worse rather than better. So get the ride done. Doesn't matter whether it's on Strava, Zwift. If your power meter fails, do it on perceived exertion. Do it on heart rate. Those things are fine. And the if it's a good 
training plan and a good session. It should be simple enough that you can just remember it and go out and do the ride. Being too rigid and sticking to the training plan regardless of everything else that's gone on in the day. If I, as a coach, I'm looking at your one hour a day that you're doing on the bike, I don't know what's going on in your life the other 23 hours of the day. That has much more potential <laughs> to ruin your day or be bad uh, than the one hour a day that you're on the bike. You could be sleeping badly, you could be eating badly, it could be a really stressful day. And the training plan isn't written with that in mind. It thinks everything's okay and as normal. So you don't, you don't need to be really rigid and stick to the plan regardless. What you should do is check in with yourself after you've done a warm up and see if you feel good, see if you feel normal. And if you do, great, crack on with the training. But you have to be flexible. If you don't feel good, then just keep it easy, just rest. Do the planned time, but super easy. Don't do the hard intervals. Only train hard when you feel good. There are 11 things that Ken hates. What do you hate? Put it in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and subscribe to this channel for more.